Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is The World Away, and today we're going to be tackling quite a marathon stage of the Corvette build, this is the Corvette Stingray by Agora Models, I'm going to be doing pack 9. Now as you can see, it's quite a big box, we've actually got the full front end of the vehicle, and we're actually going to be putting the dashboard in today, we're going to be doing some electrics, and I believe we're going to start doing the headlights, which actually go up and down. So there is a lot to do. There are some electrics. You know, I'm going to enjoy it, don't you? If you want to get this for yourself, I have put a link in the video description. There's also a QR code on the screen. You can get this all the way from pack one. But I will let you know at the end of this build how long it actually takes, because I envisage this one's going to be a marathon. But we'll have a look. Without further ado, let's get cracking. So let me just remind you that in the last stages of the last pack, we were doing the firewall, which looks like this. Now, we're going to be continuing on to that today, but we are going to be doing in page, stage 73 parts of the dashboard as well. We're actually going to be affixing the dashboard eventually to the firewall. So let's get this open. Look at the uh, dashboard. Check that out. Look, it's already got the grill section already in place for us, as you can see as well on the top camera. First thing we're going to do is we're going to be putting the left side panel into place it's going to be going onto the lugs here so when i put this in it's going to go on like that so it's sitting there that's going to create sort of like a tilted top to it held in with ep screws these are in this bag here and two screws to get these in I'm going to do exactly the same for the other side there with this one here again this goes over the top and ep screws to hold that in I've then got these metal brackets to put in. As you can see, one of them has got a locating lug in here. These are going to be going onto this section here with a locating lug going in the smaller hole, just like that. One this side, and there's going to be one on this side as well. Now, these are held in with these FP screws. So, one there. And one this side. So, at the moment, it's looking like that. I want to bring over the firewall assembly that I just showed you at the start of this stage. And I'm going to be putting this panel in here. It's basically going to be going into these two holes, probably best on the top camera, which you can see on top, just like that. Once again, EP screws from the other side to hold this in. I've then got the heater motor here, which is now going to go into the hole that we've got at the top here. Just push that into place like that. So now that's looking like that there. And then finally, I'm gonna use a bit of glue because on the top nipple here of the detail we just put in, and you know when it comes to hoses, I'm always gluing these in there because if they fall out later on, I never know where they're going. Got me tweezers, let's get this in place. And there you go. That's the pipe in place as well. And with this and this section here that we've done, that's all there is to do in that stage. In stage 74, I'm gonna be building the steering wheel and the brake booster. So the first thing I need are the support and the hub. Now the support is actually metal. The hub top part of this is plastic, but that's just gonna slot into the top like that to make one complete section. Now I'm going to take the steering column and then that's just going to slot down there like that. And on the other end of the steering column, we're going to be putting the steering wheel. There is a D-shaped pattern on here, so it can only go in one way, just like that there. And it's held in with one of these FM screws. I'm going into metal, so I have put this in oil. I'm sure that goes nice and tight in there. No wobble in the steering wheel. And when that's in, I've got this cap then just to push into the center section, like that. That was quick, wasn't it? Just creating that section there. <laughs> now on top of this cap, we do have a sticker to put on. So this is the Corvette two flag sticker. I want to make sure it's round the right way. So if that's straight, then the sticker's going to be going on this way. Let's just get this on. I do make myself laugh. Uh, while I was positioning that, I put it on a little bit wonky, so I tried to get it off. I don't know if you saw it on camera. And uh, as I was uh, putting 
just a blade in here to ping. It pinged off somewhere and I don't know where. So at the end of this build, I'm just gonna have to look on my cameras to see what direction it went into. Uh, but uh, I will put that on afterwards. <laughs> Now, underneath this section here, we've got a shaped hole. You can probably see that on the top camera. As a matter of fact, let me just zoom that out just a bit. I'm going to be putting this stalk on. Now, this stalk is directional because it is a D-shaped pattern. and It just slots into here like this. It might need a tiny bit of glue. And there you go. That's in there like that. Put that to one side. And now I'm going to be doing the uh, clutch pump. Putting this into place so I need this section here and this top section which is going to go in here again it's a patterned piece so it can only go in one way like that and it's held in with an EP screw still got some left over from the last stage so I'm not opening the new bag yet on the other side here I've got a bracket to put on and this bracket basically has a locating lug on here so that's going to go on top just like that and once again, an EP screw to hold that in. Then I'm in a position to put both of these together. So it's just basically lining up the holes here and here and pushing these together like that. There we go. That's one whole piece now. I've got a cap just to put into the top here. And again, that's just to push him. Bring over the firewall. And I get to put this into place into these two positions here, and it goes this way round. So that cap for the reservoir is fitting on top. And then once again, EP screws at the back to hold this into place, I need two of these. So we have completed this, and we've completed this section, mine and this section, which I've actually found this piece. It was actually stuck to my shoulder. <laughs> Can you believe that? Right, let's get this on. I do have one of these wax pencils for this, which is great for aligning it. Push that into place, and there you go, that's on. And that's the end of that stage. In stage 75, we're going to continue on the dashboard, and we're going to be doing the uh, foot pedals. Let's get this open. So the first thing I want is this panel here. And at the bottom of this hole, I've got a little tiny cigarette lighter to put into place. I'm just trying to find that. There we go. It's in a bag here. I use some pliers there just to help push that all the way in like that. Bring over what we've been working on the dashboard here. And this section is just going to go in here, probably best on the side camera, just like that there. Once again, it's held in with those EP screws. And that's both of the screws in that side. And then we've got the panel that's going to go on the other side exactly the same way, just into there like that. Again, held in with EP screws. So now those panels look like that. Okay, put that to one side. And I've now got a lens and dial here. Pretty easy to see how this goes in because as you can see this bit here has got a notch in it. So I've just got to make sure that the notch on this lens is going in there. Bring over the dashboard and this section is going to be fitting into the middle just here. And once you're happy with the alignment just push that firmly into place there. Like that. On the other side of this I've got a reflector to put in here. That's just going to go over the top, probably best on the top camera of the lug there. And there is a tab to lock that into position like that. And it's held in once again with an EP screw. So I'm guessing that is going to illuminate when we put a bulb in there. I've then got this frame to put in. This side is going to go over the lug just on the far end here. The middle one's going to go over the center and the end one is going to go on this side like that. Again, EP screws to lock these into place. We don't put anything down the middle one. They're just going into the M ones at the moment. This is the second one going in here. Make sure that's in tight. Then I can put this to one side. Now I need the clutch pedal. 
This is marked with an L. So it's got a stamped L just at the side there. And on this bracket here, I want to be placing this onto the left side, just like that. This time this is held in with an AP screw. Now, once again, it is a D-shaped pattern. So what you want to do is make it kind of tight until you can actually get it into where it goes, into the position, then tighten it fully. Then we're just going to be taking the brake pedal. That's going to go on the other side, and again, with an AP screw, securing into place. And there we go. That's two pedals created. Now, I've got a small 35 millimeter hose here. As a matter of fact, we've got two hoses in this one, but I want the smaller one first. Bring over the firewall, and it's this side that I want now. And in the hole or the tab that we've got just there, put a bit of glue on. And I'm going to put this 35 millimeter hose in place like that. Put that to one side and bring over something we haven't seen for a while, which is the interior of the uh, car here. And I've got another big hose just here. That one is going into the lug just on the front side here. Push that hose all the way into place there. So that's that hose in as well. And that is all there is to do in that stage. In stage 76, I'm gonna be fitting the glove box. Get this open. And what I wanna do is I wanna take the glove box lid, looking like this, and the hinge, and I'm gonna be putting these two parts together like that. Now to keep that hinge in place, I'm gonna be using these BP screws, and one is gonna go through each side. And one on this side. Perfect. Now in the top here, I've got the latch, which I'll just push in. It's a little chrome piece, this one. And there we go, that's in like that there. We've got this Corvette logo and metal plate, which has actually got adhesive on the back of it. Let's take the adhesive off and put that into the recess of this section just here. Perfect. Push it in, there we go, that's that into place. Now this part here is the glove box interior. We're gonna be putting this into the dashboard. So this is the dashboard here. This is the interior, it's gonna go into this section here. And to hold this into place, we do need a bracket. So I've got this bracket just here. Now I'll load up some AP screws. I'm putting the bracket in first. Get another AP screw loaded up, then I can put the interior of this section in, which lines up perfectly with the other side of that bracket. Put the other AP screw in this side. And then finally, straightening in this up, making sure it's sitting nice and flush, and putting an AP screw just into this side here. And now that's that interior of the glove box in place. I'm then in a position to take the glove box that we've created here and having it this way round, slide this underneath so that I can actually put these two hinge points just on the frame there. And then using these FP screws I've got, hold that into place. And then once that's locked in, you should be able to shut the glove box like that. With the last FP screw I've got, I can now put a screw down the center of the frame here. Now I've got some knobs, <laughs> I guess that's what they're gonna be called, to go into these four holes here. These are all chrome plated and there's four of these to push in. So I'll just get these in. To make this easy on yourself, I would suggest getting a cocktail stick with some oil on and just putting some oil into these holes because these knobs are quite tight to go in and the oil certainly makes things a lot easier for you as you can see that's all four of those in then I've got the radio and that's just going to be pushing into here two lugs on the back 
so it sits flat in there and that's pretty much that part of the interior complete that's that stage complete now check this out stage 77 very fiddly stage because we have got tons of parts here now the first thing I want is the speedometer. If I show you on the top camera, that's looking like that. This is gonna go into one of these uh, bezels here. Again, it can only go in one way because we've got a tab at the top. So once I've lined that up and push it in, that's what that looks like. And once again, like we did first time, make sure it's straight. And I'm gonna be pushing this into this hole just here. Perfect, that's the first dial in. Do the same thing with the tachometer. This is the only other large dial we've got left. And looks like that. Put this in this side. There you go, that's two dials in. And then the smaller gauges have pretty much got generic things on them. So we can just take any one of these, put it into a small bezel, exactly the same way that there's a little tab to help direct this. Try and make sure it's the right way round. This one's oil. So it does tell you which way round they're going. The oil one is going into this one here. So they don't go in every, wherever you still want to put them. <laughs> Let's get that one in. Perfect. Grab another one. Into the bezel. This one is battery. Battery is actually going to go next to it into this hole here. I have to say, you do need magnifying glasses to actually see these. Okay, two more. This one is fuel. That's going into this top one over here, which means finally we've got temperature, which goes into the last vacant hole. So all the dials are now in place. They look good, I like that. Now I've got two buttons again to put into holes. I will put a little bit of oil again, just to help me out with these, because these are quite tight when they go in. So one's gonna go in this side here. They look exactly like the buttons we just put into the dashboard. That's one in. The second one that goes in is slightly different to these ones. Let me just show you this one has a little sort of like knob on the top. The second one that comes in the bag here doesn't. So I'm gonna put the one with the knob on the top in that wiper one, like that. I've got an ignition switch to put into this one, which is a tiny chrome piece that looks like a uh, one of the old clock wind up mechanisms. If I put this in, You'll understand what I mean about that, looking like that. But the other big switch that we had in that two pack there, matter of fact, this wiper one actually goes into this hole there, because into this one here is a uh, cigarette lighter. <laughs> so I'm just gonna push that in. And as you can see, that's now looking good. So the two that are in the bag go there. The wiper is there and the ignition is there. Now I've got a headlight switch that looks like this. That's going underneath, just into this panel just here. It is directional. It's got like a keyhole pattern, so get it lined up and push that in. It sort of sits like that in there. So from the top, there you go. I've then got the hood latch to put in, which is gonna go into this hole just here, but this one's actually held in with a screw as well. I do need a TP screw which is one of these ones here. That's gonna hold this part into place, like that. Then I need the hood release lever and this bracket, which is stamped with an L, as you can see there. This can only go in one way, because it, again, it's got a D-shaped pattern on it. Now I do see a, a little problem here that this can only go in one way. So when I put it in this way like this, the way it's meant to go, because it's got a D-shaped hole, as you can see, what the problem is, that hood release is uh, the wrong way around. It's upside down. I'm not gonna start breaking things to get this into place. I can't twist this round. Don't think I can, though, without breaking it. So I'm just gonna leave it like that at the moment. But in the uh, instructions, it does show that the other way around. 
I can't get that the other way around. What I can do though, is mount this to the back of the instrument panel. It's gonna go in just there. It's held in with a BP screw. And there you go, that's in place there. On the other side, I've got this bracket, which is gonna go into the hole just here. Again, you've got a tab on this side, which is gonna fit into that indent. And another BP screw I need. That's that one screwed in. And then I'm just gonna take the handbrake bar. This one I can make sure is around the right way. Just push it through the hole. So that comes out there like that. Now I need to take some electrics from the car. So I'm looking for lead A3. Not very hard to see that lead because it's the dashboard lights as you can see here. So what I'm gonna do, on the back section here, I've got another load of bezels which we can just put in place over every single dial there. Then I'm gonna be putting the light into place on top of this and lining up all the holes. Perfect. And once again, those BP screws is gonna keep all of this into place. So I'll put the middle one in first, just to hold it in. I haven't tightened these. And then I'm gonna be putting the two on each side here. I then want the dashboard assembly we've been working on to feed this wire through. I want it to the left of that bracket there. So it's gonna go in there. Hopefully you saw that on the top camera. Pull this through. Then gently put this into place. Now we do have this LED here, so we sort of need to feed it under on this side here so it can get behind this dial there. Just like that, that's perfect. Okay, now I need these UP screws that I've got here. And I'm gonna be screwing those in from this side, just at the top here. So one there, and then two either side of that one. One over here, and then one just there. Now I also just wanna make sure that this LED here is going into the hole of that dial. Perfect, and so now that's in like that. Grab an FP screw. And that's going to secure the back side of this instrument panel into place here. It's all coming together now, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just going to make sure I haven't tangled these wires up. So let me just get this uh, lead out here because I'm going to be putting the pedals on, which basically go into these three holes here. There's a locating lug. So this is going to go in like that. And that's held in with these AP screws. See what I mean? This is a big stage, this one. Then I want to bring this wire, probably best on the top camera, all the way over to the other side and then fix it to the back of the glove box with this adhesive tape here. So there we go, that's all affixed. Another thing that we created in the last pack was the clutch bell crank here. I'm going to be fitting that now. That's going to be going into the firewall. And as you can see, next to uh, this section here, just gonna line up how this goes. It is a D-shaped pattern again, so it can only go in one way. It's gonna go in just like that. Held in from the other side, once again, with an FP screw. So as you can see, that's in place. And this is a bit of a historic step now. I'm gonna be basically mixing the dashboard with the firewall. So quite simply, the firewall tabs are gonna be going over the top of the brackets here. And they are held in with AM screws. So I've got them sitting on top of the bracket. AM screw there. Just enough to hold it for a second, and then I'll put one in the other side. And then I'll get this nice and tight. Putting my finger behind it, you see, so I'm not pushing down on any of the parts of the dashboard, but that's the firewall in place to the dashboard. Now I want this pipe that we put in here to go into the hood latch, which I'm just gonna put in and show you what that looks like. So as you can see, that's in there like that. Now I get to put the whole steering column in. This is gonna be fun. That's just gonna be going probably best on the top car again, underneath that section, just like that. 
The other side's fitting into the recess on the firewall. It's held in with AP screws. This is one of those marathon stages, isn't it? <laughs> There's the other one in there. So that is the steering wheel in. That's come along, hasn't it? Wow. <laughs> I then want to bring over the cockpit. And I'm guessing we're at a position now where we can mount this in. So if you see here, we've got sort of like a locating lug. I can just drop this in over this side to line up the two holes on this side and the one on that side there. But before I do any of that, you'll probably notice we've got a hose here. That's going to go, I am going to put some glue on this. That's going to go on the hood release cable that we had left. So I'll put some little glue on there because I don't want that coming off. And plug this pipe into that one. Like that. Now I'm in a position to put this into place. I'm going to grab an FP screw first. Turn this over and put an FP screw just through the hole down the center here. So I've lined that up. FP screw there. And that will keep this centered when I put the front end in. Now the front end ones are held in with SP screws, which are in this bag here. So I want two on this side and one just on this side here. And make sure that these side panels here just fit into the little grooves you can see on each side. But that is the dashboard in place. I can probably just put the uh, mat in there, put this back section in as well. Oops, other way. And that, that was an amazing stage. That's all there is to do in that stage. Now stage 78 is pretty much moving on to the next stage of the build and you can check that out by how big this box is. And look at this, we've got the front end of the car here. And that looks really good, doesn't it? Look, check that out. Wow, <laughs> I love it. Okay, but I'm gonna take this section, just leave that to one side for a second because going to be working on this headlight switches now. So the first one I need is switch mount A, which looks like this. Take out the switches which are labeled E, get the switches, there's two to one plug. And what I'm going to do is take one of these switches, doesn't matter which one, it's going to go into the recess there on the back of that switch mount A. I need a UM screw to hold this into place. So it goes into this side here. We do want this in to be quite tight. We don't want this switch moving around. And there we go. That's the first switch into position there. Get switch mount two. And once again, a UM screw. Through the switch first, then into the mount. So that should look like that when it's in. Okay, all I need to do then is take the extension lead for these switches. This is why this one's labeled E as well. And just plug this lead into the extension lead like this. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna move this to one side, and bring over, I've seen this for a while, my part work upgrade mat because I need to bring this over and put it upside down. Now this comes with a support bar here looking like that. I need to remove this. Now we don't need to keep this. So once we've taken it out, one and two, we can throw it away. It just stops this warping in transit, you see. We do have another one just at the back here. Not the easiest thing to get out. <laughs> But look, I can take it out without a screwdriver and just do that now. That one was hard to get out. So 
What I want to do first is get some adhesive tape here. It comes in this one. And I want to put this sort of off center over this section here. Now, I think the reason we're putting this in is because this is metal. We don't want any conductivity with the electrics. So uh, we do want this edge, I'm believing, to be more towards this edge here. There you go. That's that one in place. And then the small one is just going to be doing exactly the same thing on this one just here. Now, the reason for that is, if you look at these switches here, that there is a chance that this insulating can just creep down. And if that happens, this is going to expose the wires, which in turn is going to cause you a problem if they touch that metal. You don't want that to happen. So the first switch I want is switch A, looking like this. We've got a locating lug on here. I am just going to bend this wire just a touch so that I can get this into position here. Now I'm securing that in with a DM screw. Excellent. And that's that one screwed in there. Going to do the same with the other switch. Again, I'm going to bend this wire down. Put this over the top and secure that in with a DM screw. And there we go. They're both in position. And that is all there is to do in that stage. Let me just show you exactly how those switches are orientated there. Like that. And again, on the top camera, that's how they look. In stage 79, I'm going to build the headlights, get these all open. So we've got a stamp on these. That's the left one there. This one's the right one. Then I want to take the reflectors. And again, these are stamped as well. So this is the left reflector which means that one's the right reflector. And I just need to align these into place. So this one's gonna go in here like that, held in with an FM screw. Perfect, and do the same with the right-hand side one here. Now I've got these lenses to put on, and these do have a notch on these. So you've got a notch on one side and a sort of like lug on this side here. Now you do have inner and outer lenses. The difference between them, if it's got a large gap here, it's going to be an inner. If it's got a small little lug there, it's an outer. Take the smaller one, which is the outer, and that's going to go in that side there. And push them in. So then that's what the lenses look like when they're in position. Just do the same on the other one. Well, pretty easy to do once you know where they're going. And two. And that's that one completed as well. So I'm going to take the left side first and the long leads here. And I'm going to take the A2 lead and plug that into this section just like that. Then I'm going to be taking the long A1 lead and plugging that into this light here. So these are the long leads A1 and A2. So when I put these in, I do want them to sit kind of like, so the wires are sort of pointing in a one o'clock to seven o'clock motion on this side. And on this side, I want them to be on 11 o'clock to five o'clock side. Because what I'm going to be doing now is folding these down. So one this side and one this side. And when I'm folding them down, I'm making sure that they're not impeding that screw hole there. So they look just like that. It's funny, I'm saying impeding screw holes. That's not actually a screw hole. That's a, a hole for this tab here to go in. So I'm going to line up that tab on this cover here. And that's going to go in just like this. Let's get that in. Perfect. And there we go. They're into place. <laughs> okay. Doing the same on the right-hand side one. So this time, the green and yellow lead is going in this side here. Again, at 11 to five position, and the short red and uh, 
black lead, the A1, is going in this one on a 1 to 7 position. And again, fold these down like this, and then just put the cover over the top. Perfect. Now I could put these to one side because the next thing I've got to do is really weird, really weird section this is. Basically, I'm just going to be taking a wire out from the bottom of the car here. And what it wanted me to do is unplug this hose from the handbrake cable just here. Because what it wants, if I just put this here, is for me to put this in the firewall just underneath this brake servo here. So I'm going to have to get my tweezers out <laughs> to get this in. And I've managed to get that in through the top here. At the moment, I'm going to leave that lying on top. Bit weird having to do that now after we've uh, installed the firewall. Very bizarre. But that is the end of that stage. So that has now led us to the last stage of this pack, which is stage 80. Let's get all of this stuff out. Bring up the partwork upgrade map. And once again, bring over this front end. So the first set of headlights I need are the right hand side ones and these are just going to be sitting into that recess just there like that. Now to keep this spindle in position we do have a bracket. Put the bracket into place there and hold it in with an FM screw. And there we go that's holding that one in there like that. I'm going to turn this over and I want to align this like this. Now I think some uh, masking tape will help with this. Now they do provide tape, but I think I'm using my masking tape because I don't want to damage the paintwork at all. So let's put this into position. And that looks perfect to me. Turn this over. And then what I want to do is I will now use some of this tape. They give us some short version of that tape. So I can just put these wires into place and stop these wires moving. Because if these wires move, it's going to change the orientation of the headlights, which we don't want to do. We're going to repeat that on the other side here. Let's get those wires out of the way. So again. These are going in here like this. Bracket over the top and secure it with an FM screw. And once again, I'm going to align this with some masking tape here. and just secure these wires into place here. Now I need the motor looking like this. And I'm gonna be putting the motor just into this section here, this way round, just getting this into position. So it should fit quite flush in there. Now I am just gonna manipulate the switch there so it does fit flush like that, that's good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> it's going all over the place, but I am happy with how that's looking. We want all of these wires to be coming out this side here, but I don't want them to be impeding the switch. Because I'm going to be taking this section here and I'm going to be dropping this into place on both of these sides. So now that fits perfectly in there like that. So when this turns, the lights will be able to go up and down and these latches are going to be activating the switch limiters there. But the way they've got it engaged is so that it's actually activated this front switch first. Now to keep this shaft in place, I've got this metal bracket which is going to go in here. Just like that. And it's held in with DM screws. I'm just going to tidy these wires up just a little bit so you can see how they're now not impeding the wires here probably best on the top camera 
this shaft. Once we're happy with that, we can now close this off by putting this top cover on, which is going to fit on like that. Once again, that's held in with DM screws. Turn this over and take off our masking tape that we put on. I want to take this extension lead for the motor, get it nice and straight, and I'm going to be plugging that into the motor lead here. Now, before we do the test, let me just uh, remove the tape from the bottom here. And then when I press this M button here, I've plugged this into the motor socket, as you can see there on the top camera, perhaps. I'm hoping this is going to work. Let's uh, line this up with the side camera there. Press the M button. And there you go. <laughs> they work. And back down. Perfect. Up and down. Up and down. <laughs> One more on the front camera here. Up and down. That's working perfectly. Oh, I'm happy. That's all there is to do in that stage. In fact, that's the end of that pad. Do you know how much relief I've got knowing that these headlights work? <laughs> that brings a smile to my face. So we're going to be moving on to pack 10 soon. So I really do hope you like that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.